Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Photoshop to blur the background of an image. Now, in the past, I've done videos demonstrating how to do this. What makes today's video a little bit different is the type of image that we're going to be using. As you can see, we have a golfer and he's about ready to tee off. We have this foreground area. We have the area where the golfer is standing. Where does the blur start? Does the blur start just a little bit past the golfer, a little bit further away? And the blur, for it to look realistic, should be gradual. It should get blurrier the further away from the golfer we go. Well, it's still very easy to do in Photoshop, and that's what I'm going to be showing you now. Now we have the image in Lightroom. It's just an Adobe stock image, so nothing special. We're going to right click right on it. We're going to go down to edit in and then over and right at the top edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023. It's going to ask us, do you want to copy, copy with Lightroom adjustments or the original file? Let's do a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Although I don't think I did any adjustments at all in Lightroom, so it doesn't matter. So I'll click edit and it will make that copy and it will open it up into Photoshop. Now I mentioned I've done a video demonstrating how to blur the background, but in that specific image, it was a person in as I recall, it was a woman and you saw her from like the waist up, so you didn't really see her feet. So you just saw the woman, the subject, and then the background. So it was really easy to blur that background. Here we need this gradual blur that I'm talking about. Now, to get to the blur background tool in Photoshop, it's kind of hidden. It's really not in a menu. You could search for blur background, you're not gonna find it. To get to it, what you need to do is go up to the help menu and then go down to hands-on tutorial. Once you do that, this little box will open up. And what you could do, you could hit home, but what I do, hit right here, hit this little back arrow. And when you do that, you'll see right here, quick actions. That's what we want. So click on quick actions. And then you'll see there, there's a quick action called blur background. Just click on it. And when you do, it will blur the background. It gives, it takes a second and there it blurred the background. Let's move this over here and let's look at it. All right, you can see the golfer is, you know, not blurred, his golf club is blurred, uh, this foreground's blurred, everything beyond it's blurred, and it's all equally blurred. Um, that's okay. We're going to fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept this. We're just going to close this discover box down. Then to make it look more realistic, what we're going to do is go over here on the layers panel. We have two different masks. At the top, we have a mask for the golfer. We don't want to touch that mask at all. Below that, we have a mask for the actual blur. This is the mask we're going to adjust. So click on that mask so it is active. See when you click on these different little um, posted stamp things that are on the layer layers panel, you can make them active. So click on this one. This is for the Gaussian blur. That is active. Then what you want to do is apply a gradient to it. So to do that, over here on the left-hand panel where your tools are, right here, see this tool right here? The keyboard shortcut is the G key. That's the gradient tool. Click on that. Now go up here to the top, and by default, if you've never used this tool before, it should pick the right one. It's just white to black. And it's under the basics right here, and you can see it's this one right here. So white to black. If you don't see it, go to the basics. It's that one right there. Now. You may put this on upside down accidentally, and if you do, it's just easy to undo, but there's a couple things that control which way it goes on, right side up or upside down. This reverse little checkbox right here. Also, the order that these uh, color swatches might be over here in the tool well. See right now the white is in front, the black is in back. If I hit the X key, they'll flip flop. By the way, if you don't have white and black there, just hit the D key on your keyboard. It will, it will put the default white and black color swatches there. So with that said, we may put this on upside down. I don't know right now if we're going to. But in this case, we're going to put it on. And I want to draw it so it's perfectly horizontal. So to do that, hold the shift key in. That will make sure that you draw it perfectly horizontal. And just draw down from right about there on this image. And I happen to have done it correctly. If I did it incorrectly, let's say it was upside down, or let's say I just didn't like it, I need to readjust it. Uh, there's no real tool here to readjust the gradient, so you have to do it over. 
So all you need to do is go back one step, hit Commander Control Z as in Zebra, and you'll undo your last step. What you may find easier to apply the gradient is if you shrink down the view here. Right now we're at full screen view. Just hit Command or Control minus on your keyboard and you'll shrink it down a little bit. Then you could come in, hold the shift key in so we're putting in a perfectly horizontal gradient. And then you could go down a little further like that maybe. And then hit Command or Control zero to fit it to screen again. Now this one doesn't look as good. See the blur I think is starting a little bit too soon. And it seems to be, I don't know, just doesn't seem right. So I'm going to undo it, hit Command Z. I think that first time, beginner's luck, I think that one looked pretty good. So again, we'll hold the shift key in and we'll go down to the bottom here. And I think that looks better. And let's zoom back out, hit Command minus just a couple times so you can better kind of get a full view of it. And I think actually that looks pretty good. You could see how the golfer's feet and the club head, the shaft of the, um, the golf club, all that's pretty much in focus. And then right around here, it starts to get blurry and gets more blurry as we go out. Now you could readjust the blur. To do that, right over here on the right-hand side, see right here where it says Gaussian Blur? Just double click on those two words and you'll get this dialog. You can see it's at a radius of 16. You can move it up or you can move it down to make it whatever you like. I think right around 16 was fine. That looked pretty good. All right, we'll fit it to screen, hit Commander Control Zero. I think that's pretty good. We blurred the background and we did a gradual blur so that the foreground is in focus and it gradually gets blurrier as it goes back. It looks realistic. We're going to save this now. Just go up to File and then down to Save. And you got to wait for it to save. You see in the lower left hand side, there's a progress bar. Just wait for it to save. And sometimes it takes a while, particularly with PSD files. These are Photoshop files. Sometimes they take a long time to save. They'll get to 99 or 98% and then they'll sit there for a long time. Just be patient. Now it's done. You could see. And then you could close Photoshop down. On a Mac, it's just Photoshop. Quit Photoshop. And then we'll be back in Lightroom. And you can see in Lightroom, we now have two images. And if we go back and forth, sometimes it takes Lightroom a second to see the second image. There it is. So there's our blurred background image, and there's our non-blurred background image. Blurred background, non-blurred background. So that's how you blur a background in Photoshop where you need part of the foreground in focus. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.